Welcome to the Ruffles ad break, the first of the Ruffles Roughcasts. I'm Tim McInnes, Managing Director. In this podcast, we dig into how the creatives we work with get the most out of every brief to deliver best results for you. At Ruffles, we're all about the people, and when we're working with best in breed, it's easy to get great results. We also reckon that when the majority of our effective brain time is spent at work, that you might as well enjoy the ride too. In this episode, the Ruffles ladies hijack the pod. Our spicy Brazilian and Queen G take over the channel to talk creative life as young women in the game. In this episode, they talk about all things social, gender roles and what that means today, and how being in a supportive work environment can shape the trajectory of your career. But less from me, and more from Grace and B. Ruffles! Hi, Grace. Hi, Beezy. How are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Cool. Good. We are doing a girls' takeover today Mm -hmm. at Ruffles at break. Yeah, so we just thought this would be a great opportunity for us to have a chat Mm -hmm. and talk about, you know, different perspectives of the video marketing industry, Mm -hmm. everything. And, um, yeah, and I think also because, you know, you're a lot younger than all of us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's always good to hear from someone younger what is happening with the media, what's changing, how can we keep up with it? Because sometimes it's very difficult for us to to keep up. Yeah, we're moving and it's time to just take different ideas from young people. Yeah. 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 Cool. So welcome, Grace. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's nice. And okay, so I thought we would start with a little bit of an intro on you. Mm-hmm. So you are our latest um, rising star mm-hmm. here at Ruffles. Yes. Um, shining very brightly. Thank you. <laughs> You're making me blush. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> and can you just tell us a little bit about how you got into this industry? Mm. Did you have like a light bulb moment mm. or, you know, how, how did you end up here basically? Yeah. Um, in high school, I really had no idea where yeah. my life was looking um, after high school. Mm-hmm. And then I think I did media studies, I did photography, I did um, art design. And I was always interested in like digital, um, like you know, video and drawing and all that stuff. But I didn't think, I didn't even think about a career in it. Mm-hmm. And then it was in year 13 where my media studies teacher, he recommended B school, um, broadcasting school, which is um, at the um, Utter Institute. In, yeah. of Canterbury yeah. and signed up, uh, went through the interviewing process and got in, which was great. Um, and then, yeah, started my first year in 2020 um, doing TV and screen production, which was fun, which was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I had no expectations going in there. I really didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Um, I hadn't even seen the campus until the first day, which was kind of daunting. What, what made you choose that? Of course. Of course. Um, yeah. I was looking at Massey yeah. in Wellington, but then that's a four-year course mm-hmm. and it's, you know, it wasn't in Christchurch and it wasn't practical. Mm-hmm. It was all like theory mm-hmm. and learning about... It was very like film school. Yeah. And yeah. you learn like the theory of cinema and stuff, but you're not actually hands-on learning, Yeah, yeah. which is way more me. Um, yeah. So broadcasting school was a two-year, two-and-a-half-year course with an internship at the end of it, which was, like, perfect because you're getting the practical learning and you also get an opportunity in the industry to work in an actual, you know, company and production. Awesome, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that really persuaded me to um, go with broadcasting school. Yeah. Um, yeah. But why why this industry? You the know what? Like, yeah, why, why do you think you... Yeah. Um, at an early age, I like started doing, you know, those like home videos with editing and like yeah. stop motion, you know, yeah. you like, you do like little, just really fun, just random videos with your friends. I yeah. started doing that and I really enjoyed it, but I also really enjoyed the editing part of it. So you, you film it and you, you know, plan it, but then you have the opportunity to just do whatever you want with it and dissect the whole footage yeah. and like music and editing colors and stuff. And I really liked that. And yeah, I just got involved with that and that it was just an easy passion to follow you yeah know? it was awesome it was just fun and I enjoyed it so much and awesome yeah and even now like I can really see how just my love for like video and editing is just gonna follow me through yeah awesome. that's all very interesting and I think if I think about um when I was growing up I used to do the same thing mm. I used to make like home videos with my friends my mm. sister 
poor Natalia. And <laughs> she, you know, I grew up um, with a VHS camera mm -hmm. that my, you know, I was lucky enough that my parents had that at the time and I got mm -hmm. to play with it. But it wasn't something that was like today. Everyone has a camera in their pocket. And I think when you were growing up, um, maybe it wasn't that common as it is now but I think way more common than a, a VH, VHS you know so I think um, do you think that made it easier for you um, like to it, to see that as a possibility because it, there wasn't that much of a barrier of entry mm. as having a VHS camera you know it's it's a camera that everyone has in their pocket you, you can yeah you know. it definitely makes it more personal mm -hmm. like like you were saying with home like you'd have a um, camera at home but then when you'd leave the house or high school you know you're leaving that at home yeah whereas having a phone with a camera on it you're kind of taking that device with you and you film and take photos wherever you like wherever you can and you see a poss uh, possibility to do so yeah so with that um it was more yeah like me and my friends like our ipods and ipads would just film random skits and just things that would we found funny you know yeah um, because it was so easy for us to have that device and just, you know, an app like, um, Vine was what, like 2010 or something. Vine was probably the, the first, um, video app. That, the prequel to TikTok probably. Yeah. yeah. The app that encouraged people to make these silly videos with their like iPod cameras and iPad cameras and everything yeah. in between. So yeah, it's, as our generation grows, there was definitely more encouragement to use those cameras and play around with, you know, creativity and just get filming random things. And I think that has molded me into thinking, yeah, every, anything's possible with filming. Like you can take a random mundane thing and make it into like a whole cinematic, yeah, like. That's so cool. You know, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because of the access we had to cameras growing up. Yeah, yeah. I think that really changed things. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, it was really good for me to have you joining our team mm. as well. I think it's great that, you know, we have more girls in the team now. Yeah, and because, um, you know, if you think about the video industry, especially the video industry, the marketing industry, maybe not so much, mm. but the video industry um, is very male dominated. For sure. So I think, you know, it's very good to have this other perspective in our team and it's just been really good to have you yeah um do you feel that at all do you feel like the industry is very male dominated still definitely like even um at broadcasting school uh, i think there were six girls in my class mm. out of 22 so yeah. yeah big big difference with um just gender representation yeah as a yeah. whole and then not even speaking on like how as a class we operated so most of my classes would be run by the the men, the boys, because they were just stronger ca um, characters. Yeah. And then they kind of fueled themselves because, you know, there's more boys, so there's more just influence of thinking and brains and just how they're led to just operate. Yeah. Whereas the girls were the minority, so we were on the back end of, like, we kind of just sat there and watched them yeah. do all the, like, the yeah. things. Um, of course, you know, we stepped up and took lead when we felt comfortable and when we were, we were encouraged, but it's definitely not a just thing we just, you know, did and was just. A, um, yeah, I think it's harder for us to see ourselves in those leading positions yeah. when we haven't had that many examples of yeah. people who are doing that. Yeah, because you know? it's always like, oh, well, they could do it better than, than I could. Yeah. So why yeah. am let, I doing let, it? Yeah, and let's just let them do it. Yeah, especially it, when, like, our tutors would just be like, would praise like the like the boys for doing this thing. It's like, well, why should I even try if they're like already excellent at it? It's like, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that, that let me find something else to do, which is more my exactly. place. Like yeah. that position's already been filled, so why should I even bother with yeah. even trying to compete with that? Yeah. And I think as an industry, um, as a whole, I think there should be more chances and more po like opportunities for women and girls to yeah. step up before yeah. the boys do. Like obviously equal like rights and like everyone should have their own uh just opportunity to grow yeah but i think women and girls are a bit afraid because men yeah. are naturally just gonna step up and yeah that can halt our growth as a you know yeah powerful. yeah yeah and i think that's the thing that 
some people still miss out on mm. is that the benefit of having more women in your team is not only to the women, you know, there's actual mm. benefit to everyone involved. It really changes the yeah. vibe. Yeah. It's the vibe. And it's also like the diversity of like opinions and like yeah. just how like you and I, we both are, you know, women. So it's uh, how we look at things in the world are going to be different from men. So that exactly. in a workplace is I think very important, very important. because it's going to bring a whole point of view and just, yeah, like we said, vibe to yeah. the whole team. Yeah. And how we operate and work yeah even you know when that's very clear to me mm. when we do well every day honestly but when we do our creative tuesdays mm. creative <laughs> breakfast yeah. um it's really good you know to see like i think not even just our perspective but mm. everyone gets to share what it is that yeah. you know Mine has been so on random. their mind <laughs> well, Mine <are> like- <laughs> but i mean it's it's good yeah. you know that good. Yeah, you get course. to be inside that other people's uh, other people's brains for yeah. five minutes or so. Yeah. You know, that's that's really good. Yeah. I think it's really enriching. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, and yeah. I also think other, like so many workplaces need that diversity yeah. and that like just voice because it's just like if you get stuck in that like what Tim says like male style. Um, yeah, pay or male style. Yeah. Yeah. Just way of thinking. You're stunted. You know, you're not growing. You're not. You're so going to see boring. the same. You're going to be very boring very yeah. soon. So it's yeah. like we add a bit of spice. You know, yeah. we yeah. add that little bit of like <laughs> spice <change>. girls. <laughs> I honestly, I think we should call ourselves the Spice Girls. I'm not even joking. Like the Spice Girls are like my fourth top listened artist yeah. this month. Good. I'm not like Good. okay. I have a video <laughs> I've to been show really, you later. Then really rocking the Spice Girls <laughs> lately. Cool, Grace. I had one more question um, before we jump into the how media is changing topic. Mm. I just wanted to know because you know you're pretty new to mm-hmm. the industry. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to know, just out of curiosity, what were your expectations mm. and how do you feel that the industry is different to what you expected mm. or is it not? Yeah. Um, I don't, again, I don't really have expectations. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I want to freak myself out. So yeah. coming into this job, I didn't want to be like expecting all these things and then either be let down or like be completely overwhelmed because mm-hmm. it just wasn't what I expected. So I was yeah. like, you know, doing the two year course at broadcasting school, I did get the exposure of how, um, just a um, workplace should operate in yeah. the media, but it definitely wasn't um, like this. Like it's better. Like awesome. this is like this has exceeded all the expectations I could have ever had. Oh, great! Um, like obviously, it was daunting coming yeah. in here, like a professional <laughs> office, and you guys have. I know this, we're like, so intimidating. So intimidating, yeah. <laughs> but you know, um, it's great. I can't imagine like people in my school and my class have gone to like big corporations and like yeah. being a big, like a big group of people. And they're just like a number, you know, but yeah. being in a small group of people and where you actually like, you have an influence and you have just a voice to like, you're, you're heard. Up. Yeah. yeah. I think that's really made me come out of my comfort zone because yeah, that's awesome. I'm not saying I expected to like, just be, you know, an intern where, you know, you just get coffee and you just yeah. do what, what you're told, but you guys put me in a position where I actually, have an opinion and you I make things uh from my point of view and like yeah. my just creative vision you know yeah yeah so and it's may I just add yeah that that's not because we're nice or anything yeah. it's because we actually hear what you have to say and yeah. it actually makes sense mm. you know we we yeah like I said it's very difficult for us oldies <laughs> to keep up, keep up with everything yeah. that's changing for sure. like TikTok even for me is a big change mm. you know I'm yeah I, you I know, still don't get it yeah you yeah know? No, I so don't think anyone can really understand it because it's a, it's ever changing yeah but yeah. um with the expectation expectation thing it's definitely like I don't know why but it was daunting coming in here because I'm like I don't know what to expect like what if I'm just a number like I'm not mm-hmm. gonna grow from here but you know I have grown and I have learned so much yeah and I'm not sure if most people could say that because you know they've gone into other corporations big ones so I think I'm very lucky in that yeah. aspect because I have had the opportunity to be in a good group of t- uh, people that yeah. have um, embraced me and yeah. with open arms and my background, you know, yeah. and my yeah. um, vibe, my weird. <laughs> Your good vibe. My weird vibe. Your weird. 
It's, yeah, but like, again, you guys are weird as well. So yeah. it's like, why is that not normalized that this industry is- Is weird, it's really weird. Weird people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, in a good way. In a good way. In it the makes, nicest it way. It makes me more comfortable because yeah. it's like, I don't have to put up this front that I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, who wants that? Yeah. 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 But yeah. I'm sure you can agree that like the first, like maybe two months of me being here, I was just like, Oh, same. You know? I mean, I actually wore like a proper, like I almost wore a blazer <laughs> and, yeah, to my interview here. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> but letting down that guard is so nice. Like yeah. I couldn't imagine like being so just, I don't know. Comfortable. Yeah. In the workspace. And like a, yeah. Yeah. And just having it, yeah, such a yeah. great group of people. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, Grace. Okay. Now, in terms of how the media is changing, mm -hmm. please help us keep up. <laughs> please. <laughs> please. <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I was, you know, the thing that we're always asking you about here mm -hmm. is how can we make this brand, you know, position itself better mm. for younger audiences and, target, and yeah. yeah yeah so that's uh something that i'm always asking myself especially when i'm working in the social media aspect of things mm -hmm. um how do we actually keep up with so many changes mm. and so the one thing i wanted to ask you is what do you feel like brands should be doing more of mm. when it comes to talking to younger audiences mm. and do you feel like there's they sometimes are a little bit afraid of mm. taking risks? Yeah, for sure. I think as branding and marketing goes, it's risky to take risks because yeah. you don't actually don't know how it's going to perform mm -hmm. and you're putting all this money into targeting yeah. and marketing and stuff. Yeah. So taking a chance, taking a leap is it's you know, it's scary because yeah. you're exposing it's just you don't know how it's uh, going to perform. Yeah. So with social media, it's daunting because yeah you really don't know how you know audiences and just everyone in general are yeah. going to react yeah and that's something that I don't think you can predict it's like social media is so unpredictable yeah like memes and like just things that go viral are like what like this is so random and no one could have ever predicted it you know yeah. so for brands I think it's important to obviously acknowledge that there's a big presence of, on social media, huge. Like it's don't ignore I it. I can't. Don't stress pretend enough. TikTok is not there because it is. I can't stress enough how like important it is to unlock that just mind of okay. We need to go on. We need to have an Instagram. We need to have a TikTok. We need yeah. to have like YouTube. Even it's just like unlocking that is going to open up your world of just like new target markets and just like new audiences that don't even know about your product or yeah. know about what you're trying to, you know, sell or persuade. Yeah. Um, TikTok, especially like every day I'm seeing new brands on TikTok that I was like, oh, they've, they finally made it. You know, they're finally, their marketing team is finally they like, got been like, it. yeah, <laughs> you know, I saw, I yeah. saw like Pringles or something have a TikTok. I'm like, okay, cool. Now they're on here. Like now they've, you know, it's just, it's not more like, oh my God, Pringles is, has a TikTok. It's more like, okay, cool. They've acknowledged that it's we exist so, it's, almost. Yeah, it's so smart to get a TikTok for a brand because it's like the algorithm and how you can just target people. It's just it's insane. Like, yeah, it's a whole I other ball game. I think when I'm when I'm um, creating strategies for social media and stuff, I always um, tend to run away from trying to follow every single trend because mm. you're just going to go insane mm. if you try like so or many. you just have to have a really big team yeah that can actually keep up with everything but mm. i think uh one of the things about social media is just you know it's important to be there it's mm. important to be present and to be doing your own thing mm. but not you know get caught up in the whole be into every into you know get into yeah, every trend and every definitely. wave and yeah, and also like not taking just, yourself seriously yeah like the thing it's like authenticity now authenticity yeah yeah is so recognizable yeah and like just a slight sign of like oh this is not authentic or this is like so corporate yeah people run away yeah you can you can just see it by like any video so it's like that's very true just being yeah. so real and just not taking yourself seriously is, it's, I think it's important for brands as well because yeah, it's like being authentic is a new wave of just yeah. how to 
um, target. An yeah, audience, I and I, I think that don't take yourself seriously mm. too is um, something that keeps brands from experimenting sometimes. Definitely. Because I think, as you were saying, you know, it is risky to try mm. something new that you've never done before. Mm. Um, but at the same time, it's also risky to stay mm. doing old. the exact it's, same thing you've boring. been doing. It's for, predictable. Yeah. And yeah. I think brands would get recognition for it, for doing something completely out of their comfort zone because they're like, wow, they took a chance. They're not like this corporate, you know, yeah, just yeah. office that, you know, revolves around just the same old um what's it called like co uh, cookie cutter mm. like way of thinking it's like oh they've actually thought outside the box and yeah like uh did you see the advertising for uh that horror movie smile no it was so good they um instead of like doing billboards and like trailers and stuff they just have a trailer but they bought tickets to an nba like but baseball mm -hmm. um like game Bas yeah and they had like the main like lead character or, or like someone just sm smiling the entire standing up smiling the entire time t to the camera and obviously that got so much media attention because like why is this random yeah. just creepily smile <laughs> smiling in front of the camera but that was the horror movie because it's, like, it's, it's about That's like you know just smiling or yeah but like so smart buying tickets to a baseball game instead of a whole ad campaign yeah. that no one's going to look at you yeah. know it's like yeah. that the marketing team for that was so smart and it got so much attention like yeah. it did exactly what they wanted and yeah. it was different it was authentic and that's it paid off because that's the thing i think especially now with social media mm. when people see an ad it might be effective mm. but if it's not authentic if it doesn't feel real mm -hmm. people immediately go "Ugh, they're trying to sell me something yeah while in social media you have a real opportunity to be relatable mm -hmm. you know and to sell without selling you yeah. know so yeah yeah I and think also like humanizes it it's like they're just people behind a screen like you know yeah. just trying to get their product out there and they're just like they're like us, you know, it's it's like, yeah, it's the auth authenticity thing again. It's just like, they're people. Well, so much so mm. that we have Be Real now. Mm, we do you have know? Be Real. Yeah. Yeah, like my, I had Be Real for, mm -hmm. I think, I don't know, a month. And then... Oh, can I just uh, tell, you know, because some of our audience yeah. might not know yeah, tell them what about Be, Real. Be Real is. Yeah. But it's an app that, do you want to explain it? You, yeah, it's, I think it's a new app that... Um, just took the market by storm and like there was you know so many tiktok trends promoting it which was also smart but it's basically an app um that once a day a notification goes off and you're supposed to stop everything and take a picture of you and then it also takes a picture of um like the other back camera, camera. Yeah. so if i took one it'd be like me selfie and then like you know the whatever the it, it's in front of you yeah. yeah so that goes off once a day anytime you know it can go off this morning it can go off like lunchtime any you know you don't plan it and then yeah, you're supposed to stop everything and then you have friends on there that also get the same notification the same time and then you can get to see what they're doing the exact same time as you yeah. um it's a great idea very new and refreshing mm -hmm. you know that's why it blew up because it's yeah. like authentic authenticity you yeah. know it's like that authentic being real being real not, not faking it's in the yeah. name yeah yeah but um i deleted it because um why did i delete it I think there was a point where I, I was waiting for the notification. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm doing something really cool right now or I'm with people. So I I'm wish like, it would. Yeah. I, I want it to go off. And yeah. even my friends that have it now, they're like, oh, like, B-Real hasn't been out yet. Or like, oh, my God, B-Real's out. And I'm just like, I am that person now. I was like, really? You're yeah. still on that? But, yeah. you know, I, <laughs> I make fun. But it's like I'm waiting for it. And, like, as soon as I clocked in, I was like, thinking about it i was mm. like this is another thing i'm thinking about like not Instagram. healthy yeah yeah it's not healthy and i was just like if i just delete it and i deleted it and i actually didn't think about it since then so it's like i'm not going to give it the power of just like i don't need another, controlling my life literally i don't need yeah. another thing to think about i don't need another social yeah. media app stalking me you yeah. know yeah even if it's the authentic one yeah yeah exactly it's like it's authentic but it's also not yeah. But I get what they're trying to do and I'm sure, you know, it's it's fun. And my friends are still on it. Um, but I see that it, I see the app 
also controlling their life. Yeah. It's like a little like horror movie as well. It's like yeah. controlling like stalking. I mean, I think it definitely what it does it, it is it definitely shows mm. that people like the authentic stuff, that mm. people like the the connection you get from seeing other people's real It's real. You know? Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that's the one big takeaway from the success of Be Real is yeah. that people are really searching for that. No one wants to see a fake made up. We're tired of filters. Yeah, we're tired yeah. of, you know, just posts that are edited. Yeah. And, you know, so an app that does celebrate just being real and being authentic, yeah. you know, it's great. Yeah. But then it also comes at a cost where it's like you're waiting for the notification. You're like looking at what everyone else is doing. If you're in bed every night, you know, you're deemed as boring or, you know, yeah. it's like, there also comes a point. Then where you feel bad because no, I know you didn't it's have like anything it's like, interesting in your yeah, day. Yeah, it's psychological because yeah. you're like, oh, you know, people are always going to think I'm in bed or doing nothing. It's like no, it's just you know that's life. It's real. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like you're going to have days where you're doing nothing or I don't know. Yeah, yeah, cool. but yeah, pretty interesting. Okay, do we have time to talk a little bit about um, you know? There's a whole lot of controversy around TikTok mm -hmm. and whether it's going to be banned or not mm. due to privacy reasons or mm -hmm. breaches or, you know, mm. um, what do you think? Do you think, I think we saw, uh, it was Mark Ritson that said something about how dangerous it is and mm. that it's very likely to be um, banned, at least in the States, but, mm. you know, maybe other countries as well. Do you think that's a possibility? For New Zealand, I'm not sure mm -hmm. because um, I know creators don't even get paid um, for their con like how many views mm -hmm. um, in New Zealand. That is, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm really not sure. I haven't fully read into the banning of like, the potential banning of TikTok. I know it's obviously a huge search engine and full of data and full of just accounts and yeah. you know their whole you know data and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, it's like if you if you ban TikTok, it's like another app like that is just gonna resurface. Yeah. You can't just remove an idea and yeah. think it's that it's gonna solve the whole problem. Yeah. You know. I think short form videos mm -hmm. are here to stay for sure. You know, Instagram even with has reels, it now. Yeah. shorts, honestly, YouTube, and it's like you can't just take that away from a whole audience now because yeah. that's gonna have repercussions. Yeah. Um, but the privacy um, problem. Yeah. I mean, to be fair. Privacy is a huge problem in social media as a whole. I don't think it's yeah. just TikTok that is the problem. So I think it'd be not stupid, but kind of pointless if they just ban TikTok, especially when it's, I think it's it's bigger than Google at the moment. Yeah. I think like a couple of months ago, it was the most searched thing wow. on the It's internet. really being used as a it search is. engine. Like people yeah. don't even need, need an account to use it. Yeah. It's like, crazy. It, yeah, it's crazy. And I personally use it as, yeah, like an engine for cooking recipes and like even like knowledge like I watched like a document documentary like short video on that Crazy. and it was like yeah. 10 little clips of like just like two minutes of footage and like I would watch that on YouTube but I saw it on yeah. TikTok and it's like it's just used as way more than just a 30 second 15 second just dance video you know it's yeah. it's actually evolving into oh, yeah, a it's really, really evolved. yeah it's 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 a second YouTube you know yeah, yeah. Um, and with that, you know, it's it's does have a big power with it, but I'm not sure if it's just as simple as banning it. Yeah. 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 I agree. Mm. Cool. Grace, yeah. I'm afraid that's all we have time that was for fun. today. I loved it. It was really fun. Yeah. Thank you for accepting the girl takeover. Oh, we should do it again. Yeah. 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 Way let's more. Just, yeah. 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 Let's just do our own podcast. Yes. Ban the boys. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of them. Thanks, Grace. Awesome. Thank you so much. See you in five minutes. Thank you. <laughs>